Over the years, I've had 11 broken bones. I, the day I fell off the mountainside, I had all of my bottom teeth kicked out. Bit by a cobra in Indonesia. I was kicked by a horse in Ecuador, which is, yeah, I guess it's a struggle. Too many times I've come home from the field in a wheelchair, which is more than a little embarrassing. It's been a great run. But we have now planted 50 million trees and we're still counting. I got hooked into this and I've been there ever since. We've had hands-on experience helping people plant trees, bring back forests in the world's degraded lands. Inside the office, we are fluent in, I believe, 27 languages. We have programs in Fiji, in the Philippines, in Indonesia, Nicaragua, Belize, Haiti, Turks and Caicos, Mali, Ghana, Panama, Guatemala, Honduras, Thailand, Nepal, certainly in India. We have them in Rwanda, Burundi, Somalia, and Ethiopia, West Africa, Senegal, Republic of Congo. Oh yeah, in Uganda, that's a big program. We have 300,000 farmers, 300,000 families in Southern Ethiopia that see that there's a big need to plant trees. Multiply that by 100 trees per family maybe, and think what you've got. Just about everywhere we are, they're moving faster than we can comprehend or keep up with. The world loses approximately 100,000 acres of its forests every day. Screams are drying up, the soils are depleting, and there's no fertilizer of any sort. Even the weather in these places is changing. Right now there are over a billion people in the world who simply can't meet their daily nutrition standards. There's no reason for this. We have an idea called the forest garden, which is not a forest, it's not a garden. But we think it combines the best attributes of both. It produces a great amount of product sustainably on a very small piece of land. It is sending millions of roots down into the ground, which are guiding water back into underground aquifers. You have a return of diversity, you have cooled the land, cleared the air a bit, and improved the quality of life. And all of this is sustainable just by planting some seeds. 11 miles from downtown Manila, uh, there were mountainous areas there in the Sierra Madre Mountains. They had been deforested about 105 years earlier, and tree cover never came back in. The, the land was covered with a very harsh grass, which most people call kogan. Uh, and it didn't allow anything else to grow. We found three species of trees that we thought we could successfully plant in these very harsh conditions, and so we did. But as we did our forest inventory, we found that within this thing, there are now 41 species planted. We planted three. 38 species came back and, and we're wondering how. We thought it's, well, wild pigs are coming back in, and I have to admit, that wild pigs are better tree planters than I am. They're forever rooting and pooping and things happen. We had Gallus gallus, which is the ancestor of chickens back in there. Everybody thought it was extinct in that part of the world, but it's back. We found out that in lands like this, you have roots and seeds laying dormant in the ground, even after a century. I'm not saying that we know how to rebuild a rainforest. Probably could happen, but it would take tens of thousands of years but we can bring back a very useful and interesting biodiversity. It's a magical thing to, to know or to, to learn that the world, nature by itself has, when it's in its own coding, uh, uh, self-preservation elements. All we need to do is just sc scratch it, create that, facilitate that environment when nature can take over. There has to be harmony in the ground. People have to have a calm, place. People have to have something to drink. People have to have fuel to cook with. People have to have a shelter. All that evolves around tree. The miracle is, first you have to have anchoring point. And the anchoring point is tree planting, because everything evolves around it. Uh, two years ago, one Gary Matai, who we had worked with in, in the early days of her Women's Green Revolution program was honored with the, the Nobel Peace Prize for her work in planting 30 million trees in, in Kenya. Wangari won that prize deservedly because 
she pointed out that all of these wars that are breaking out all over Africa and all over much of the rest of the world, if you get right down to it, they're all wars fighting over the natural resources. I'm by trade an economist. A good example in the Philippines, by good stewardship, managing what they had planted, a typical family was earning over $100 a month, and that's, that's big time money in Southeast Asia. We have given people the ability to build their own institutions so that we don't have someday in the future uh, some logging company coming back in there, pushing people around, trying to force them off their land. Because now they have some going businesses, they have some pride in what they're doing and, and a lot of confidence in themselves. And this makes the village life continue. In West Africa, people are now planting a tree that had little to recommend it in the past, except that it produces a lot of fruit this fruit has a seed which contains high amounts of, of oil, which is easily converted into diesel fuel. In Haiti, we've been talking the same thing. Just think of this, here are the most marginalized people on earth who suddenly have the capability with nothing but their bare hands to produce the world's most desired commodity. If we have done anything in planting 50 million trees, we have shown there's a way to do this. One tree we plant quite often, it's called Moringa. If it's planted in January, by December of next year, this tree will be more than 20 feet high and it sustainably produces a large amount of leaves. And they contain about 26% protein. The basic technology we introduce is, is simple. People start taking hope and that takes the biggest pressure off the land, which is the, the pressure of human desperation. Typically, a tree in our project takes 50 pounds of carbon dioxide out of the air every year and converts it into things people can use, like food and shelter and medicines, which are sustainably used in, instead of being up in the atmosphere, uh, causing these global warming problems. We plant a tree for a dime. I don't know whether I'm a technician or a cheerleader or a butt kicker, but I'm saying, guys, you can do it and we'll show you how. Grace and I have nine children and we have 17 grandchildren. These children are gonna grow up as children all over the world are doing in a much, much different world. We could be planting more than half a billion trees a year. It's possible, there are that many people out there waiting for something. All it takes is getting the word around and, and, and creating some confidence that it can be done. I learned a long time ago in this business not to ever use the word never, because as soon as you say never, some guy's gonna come down off the mountainside and say, guess what I just did? It's amazing what one seed can grow.